Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I have a quick announcement before we get started. I may not have any videos to put up next week. I've been having some work done in my home office and it's been really difficult for me to do any recording while that work's being done. Uh, you probably, well, you may have noticed that this week all the videos have come out later in the day than normal. Usually I try to put them up first thing in the morning or in the evening and uh, with this work that's being done, I haven't been able to record much, so I'm recording the day I'm posting them. So, uh, as a result, I don't think I'm going to have any videos done next week. And then after that, I'm actually starting a new venture, which I can't talk about much just yet, but I hope to say more about later. And um, that's going to be taking a lot of my time. So I do plan to keep on doing the videos, at least up to episode 100, but I might have to slow down the pace of it a bit. So uh, for some of you, I think that will be an opportunity to catch up, and you'll appreciate it. Others, I apologize, but uh, I'm going to have to slow the pace. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that before we get started. So where we were was we were just getting started on the dollars text field. And I think what I want to do is start out by replicating the existing functionality uh, that came out of using the regular text field. This is definitely a tough one to do. I mean, we are basically building a, a, a brand new component in a way and I, you know, I'm really not sure the best way to do this. I'm not sure about the best way to test it. So I think there's going to be a fair bit of experimentation. If anybody watching this has done this before, I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, you can comment at my website, jamesshore.com, or on the YouTube videos, but I prefer the website. Anyway, um, let's start. So we've got the field. Uh, and I think just to get this thing going, let's assert that that's not null. That will certainly fail. Okay. Now I think what I want to do is I want to pass in some number of dollars. And then I think I'd like to be able to get that amount back out. Let's see. being pretty inconsistent in my naming conventions. Uh, sometimes I use get, sometimes I don't. I think in this case I want it. Should fail. That should pass. Really simple so far. Now, for lack of a idea of a better way of doing this, I'm going to I'm going to just make some assertions about the, cons the way that class is constructed because I don't know how to really assert on the behavior of it, uh, which is my preference. In TDD, I want to assert on the way the class behaves, not on how it's implemented. But I don't know how to do that here. So 
I'm just going to try some stuff. Now what's it complaining about? Maybe it, that's a static analysis. It just knows that it can't be an instance of JPanel. Yeah, that was it. Don't really understand why all the swing components are serializable. All right, it's a JPanel. So It's going to have components. This is very odd and awkward, um, but I don't really, like I said, I don't know a better way of doing it. Let's see, is that J component? No, what is it? Just a component. And it should have one component, which it's not going to have yet. So the good thing about doing this is that it is forcing me to take small steps and sort of work this through rather than just hacking. Uh, the bad news is it's extremely about much about the internals. It's very implementation specific. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and keep on going. We're going to want to I'm purposely using a J panel there to make the test pass in the wrong way so that I am forced to program another test to check that it's doing it in the right way. And what do I want? I wanted a formatted text field. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, well, we've made some progress. Now, the interesting thing here is I can't substitute that new field in because these tests are very specific to how 
all of that works. So, which is an indication of the flaw with these tests as well. I think what I'll do is just set this to ignore for now. I'm going to modify this to say it should be a dollars text field. That should fail. Yeah, expected dollars text field was J text field. This isn't going to work at all. That's okay. I'm going to. How was that field being set before? I guess it wasn't. So I'm just going to hard code this for now. That should pass. It does pass. Um, well, sort of. Oh, I see. Yeah, this whole thing is forked. Okay, well, hackity hack. Oh, that's the wrong place. Ah, stop it. Oh, isn't that lovely? Look at that. Pretty sure that's not what I intended. Um, hmm. Well, how am I going to do that? So I need this panel to show up properly. And it's, of course, setting the size wrong. This is why use I said in the last video that delegation was more difficult than an inheritance in a UI, at least in the Java Swing UI. I think this is true for most UIs I've worked with, though. And the reason is, is that there's just a lot of stuff that happens in a component that is difficult to forward or has to be forwarded just right. I think, honestly, I'm probably better off extending the formatted text field and making my dollars text field than trying to work out all those broken bits. So we're out of time for today, so I think that's where we're going to pick up next time. Once again, I might not be putting up any videos next week. It really depends on how many I do on this session. Today is December 31st, 2010. Happy New Year. Yay. And um, so I may not have any videos up next week. We'll see. And uh, after that, I probably have a slower rate of release. But that's, uh, that all remains to be seen, that things might go better than I thought. Anyway, so next time we'll pick up fixing this sizing problem, and uh, I will see you then. Thanks for watching.